Hello, everyone, and welcome to Homeschool Trivia Class. We, I'm Randy from Peanut Butterfish Lessons, and this week we're going to be talking about owls, Veterans Day, and daylight saving time. So lots of topics. So if you are joining us, some of you are already saying hi, feel free to jump in the comments and say hi, tell us where you're watching from, something fun you learned this week. And while you do that, I'm going to hand it off to Katie, Katie, from the Wolf Pack. Get it in the right direction. And she's going to tell us about some special days going on this week. All right. So I'm Katie from the Wolf Pack. Welcome. Today is Go to an Art Museum Day. Hmm. Hmm. I, I did not, not do that. Okay, but <laughs> what? I did not do that. I didn't go to an art museum. The day's not over. <laughs> and then tomorrow, this is an interesting one, area code day, which is very interesting. If you have not, um, if you were not raised with a normal phone where you had to dial everything all the time, um, you may not be totally aware of what an area code is, but we still use them today. So it is very interesting to, to look into that. And then on Saturday, does anybody know what Saturday is? Put in the chat if you know what Saturday is. While they're doing that, Katie, we have to know our area code because our city has grown so fast that we have two area codes. And so even if you're calling your neighbor, you've got to put in the area code. It wow. could so yeah, I forget that in other places they don't have to use area codes. Wow. Yeah. Anybody? I don't see anything about Saturday. What do you think it no, is? No, nobody has guessed what Saturday is. All I think right. you need to tell us. I know it is Veterans Day on Saturday. It is always on November 11th, regardless of what day of the week it is. And we'll learn a lot more about that in, in a few minutes. But before we do Veterans Day, we are going to start with owl trivia. Okay, and let me wait. get my slides up. Elle got it up there. Elle did get that Veterans Day. All right, we are going to go ahead and start. So let's see what our first question is. All right, one of these statements is true about owls. So which one is it? And this is a cute little barn owl there on the picture. Aren't they adorable? So what's true? Do owls hunt for food during the day? Do they eat plants during the day? Do they hunt for food at night? Or do they eat plants during the night? Only one of these is true. So put in the chat A, B, C, or D. All right, we have a couple C's. I see three C's. C's. I think you know this, Katie, don't you? I do. We'll get to some hard ones in a minute. It's good to start easy or yeah. simple. It's not necessarily easy. It's a nice, simple one. Mm -hmm. Lay a foundation. All right, we got a D. We got more C's. I likes the photo, too. There's another barn owl photo in a few minutes, too. All right. Almost everyone has said C, and you are correct. They hunt for food at night. So let's think about these two words here. A predator is a hunter, so an owl is a predator. And they are nocturnal, which means they're awake at night. So you could say an owl is a nocturnal predator. All right, moving on to number two. This is a trickier one. What is an accurate, that means correct, description of an owl's eyes? So do we call them eyeballs? That's how we refer to our eyes, right? It's kind of slangish, but eyeballs. So are, do owls have eyeballs, eye pyramids, eye eggs, or eye tubes? So I might have stumped Katie. Go ahead and put your guess in the chat thread. Let's see what you think. All right, Ashley's eight-year-old says egg or egg, 
I pyramids. I'm combining two of the answers. We got a couple I tubes or one I tube maybe. It's going fast on me. An I egg. Your chicken likes this photo. Okay. But he says, see, I say A. We're kind of all over the place on this one. We got another A eyeballs. All right, so from the front, they don't look that different from us. What do you think, Katie? I'm in it. I'm making an educated guess based on okay. what I have in my brain already. I'm going to say D. D. Okay, Katie's saying I tubes. Do you want to tell us why you're saying that? Because I'm about to show the answer. So I'm curious. I'm saying that because I do believe that owls turn their heads, not their eyes. Mmm. And I believe, I'm not, I don't know. Well, tell me something mm -hmm. in a minute. So that way they're not balls. They don't roll around. I don't know. Right. All right. Guess what, everyone? Katie knows what she's talking about. And some of you do too. They are eye tubes. They can only see right in front of them. If they want to look at something else. So you can see some, if you hold your hand out here right now, and you look straight ahead, you can see your hand a little bit, right? Especially if you're going like this. Owls would not see that. If you were next to their head going like this, they would not see your hand, okay? Gasp of exclamation from L. That's interesting. All can right. Go that, wait, go back to that slide where you had the question. The question. No, that one. Do you know what that is? You had to ask me that. I don't know which one that is offhand, no. All right, sorry. I think I think most of the others I do, and that one I was like, "Ooh, these are good eyes," and I didn't, yeah, worry about it. Sorry. No, that's all right. Because he's handsome. All right. Oops. Okay. So we talked about eyes. Now let's talk about feet. I purposely picked a picture where you can't see the owl's feet. So, do owls have webbed feet? Do they have talons? Do their feet look weirdly like human feet? Are their feet covered with hair? What do you think their feet are like? Put your answer in the thread. I'm hoping you know this one, Katie. You feeling confident? All right. We just had the answers rolling. We got lots of Bs. They have talons. I think we got a D. Lots of Bs and some Ds. All right, I think we've got most of our answers in, and most people are correct. They have talons, which are good for hunting. So you can see our bar barn owl in this picture is like holding his tail up for you. He's like showing it off. Okay, picture that just swooping down and grabbing a mouse or, you know, some small rodent like that. Um, does anybody know why D would be definitely not the answer? Why they would not have hair? Does anybody know that? Oops. And the reason they wouldn't have hair is only mammals have hair. So they belong to a very different group of animals. All right, moving on. Now, this seems like a strange question, maybe, but I am going somewhere with it, okay? Humans have seven vertebrae in their neck. So see those bones going down that skeleton's neck? There's seven of them. How many do owls have? Do we think they have four? So less than us, seven, same. Ten or 14? How many vertebrae do you think they have? The snowy owls are not going to have hair. Now, maybe their feathers are different on their feet compared to other owls. I don't know. I would have to look that up. Oh, and that's a good point. Somebody said if they had hairy feet, it might be too slippery to pick up their foods. So that's a good point. Okay, where are we at? We've got a couple guesses for 14 vertebrae. We got one for 10. We've got, hold on one second. 
I don't know if you could hear that vibrating, but we'll stop it. All right, we have lots of 14s. Do we have any other answers? What do you think, Katie? Ooh, we got a four. Um, and now somebody hit said C, so somebody said 10. I think it's 14. You think it's 14 as well. All right. It is 14. Owls can turn their heads 270 degrees. And if you can't picture what that means, they can take their head, not move their body at all, and turn it, turn it all the way behind them, and then turn it all the way to here. And then they can do that in both directions. So they can actually swivel their head more than a full circle. It's kind of crazy. So I tried to get a picture of an owl here that you know you could kind of see how far they were turning. All right, one last owl question. How tall is the tallest owl about how tall? Do you think the tallest one is one and a half feet, two feet, two and a half feet, or four feet? And I do have a picture of the tallest species, or not species, tallest type of owl, um, but obviously they're not standing up. It's a trick, trick picture there. Okay, we've got Someone said four feet, and we've got a one and a half feet. We've got a two and a half feet. Two and a half. Katie already knows the answer to this because we had a chat about it yesterday. So you don't get to answer, Katie. All right, so we've got lots of, we're kind of all over the place. It is two and a half feet. So the largest type of owl is a Blakiston. I'm assuming that's how you say it. Blakiston, Blakiston's fish owl. It is almost two and a half feet tall and it's 10 pounds. Which is a so lot I'm for a Mm-hmm. For a bird that flies, right? right. Yeah. That's a lot of weight to pick up off the ground and fly around, yes. All right, well, very good job with your owl trivia. It is time to switch. There we go. We are going to Veterans Day trivia. Get your all brain right. switched over. Going from, all right, going from some animals to some history and current event, but it's got a lot of historical uh, information that we can learn on this. So which is correct? Veterans Day with an apostrophe between the N and the S or Veterans Day with the apostrophe after the S, Veterans Day with no apostrophe or none of the above? Which one is correct? I had to Google this this week so I could make the cover for this class. I, know. I can hear an airplane. Is that an airplane, Randy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. We have some D's and a B. Let's see. What do you guys think? There's a C. I'll wait for one more answer. Elle, are you in Canada or you just know lots of facts about Canada? All right, well, wait, Elle, Elle can answer whenever she's ready. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. It is a Veterans Day with no apostrophe. And even though you'll see it in lots of different ways, if you're just reading something somewhere on the internet or probably even in books and the newspapers, you'll see it a lot of different ways, but they're very clear on how it's supposed to be. So according to the Office of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs, which sounds very official, Veterans Day does not include an apostrophe, but does include an S at the end of veterans because it is not a day that belongs to veterans but it's a day to celebrate all veterans. So an apostrophe shows possession, right? And the day doesn't belong to them, so there's no apostrophe. It's for us 
to celebrate all of them, but it doesn't belong to them. So that's why there's no apostrophe. All right, next question. On Veterans Day, do you see the comment from Al? Yeah, I can, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. On Veterans Day, we should celebrate those who are currently serving, those who served, those who died while serving, or both B and C. So those are currently serving, those who served, those who died while serving, or both B and C. All right, we have some Bs and Cs, or we have a D, which is B and C, and we've got a, just a B. Anybody else? All right, so here we go, and there's a C, another D. So it's both B and C. So it's those who served and those who died while serving. So a veteran, let's first talk about what a veteran is. It's anybody who served in the military and was honorably discharged or released. So you can't be, we don't consider you a veteran if you were kicked out of the military or if you um, went AWOL, which means you abandoned the military, anything like that. So you have to be somebody who served and you're honorably, you were honorably discharged. Um, it could it could be someone who served during wartime or during peacetime. So it doesn't have to be someone who served just during a war. It can be anybody who served. And you can be alive or deceased and still be considered a veteran. But you don't have to be deceased to be considered a veteran. Veterans Day is for living and deceased veterans who served. Um, and it's not someone who's currently serving. So if you're like actively serving in the military, you're not a veteran. You're an active, um, I'm listening the word for it, but you're an active, uh, active duty. You're an active duty. And that's, there's a different day for you. That's armed forces day. So this is for people who have, who have served. Now it could be an elderly person like in the picture, or it could be someone like my brother who you might think is elderly, but he's, you know, just 50. Um, Cause he was in the Navy for, you know, I don't know, eight years or something like that. So he's a veteran but it's somebody who has served. All right, my next thing. How many veterans are living in the United States today? 18,000 or about 180,000? About 18 million or 180 million? What do you think? A, B, C, or D? So we've got a D. Oh, got a lot of answers all at once. C's, B's, C's. All right, we are all over the board on this one, aren't we? I don't think we have an A. Do we have an A yet? No, I don't think so. I'm gonna go with C as, oh. Well, I was going to go see as well. Yes. So it's about 18 million. We have 18 million veterans in the United States today, and we have 1.4 million active hmm. duty military in the, in the country today. So obviously a lot more veterans because it's everybody who has served in the past. All right. Next question. Why is Veterans Day on November 11th? Like I said at the beginning, it's always November 11th, no matter what day of the week it is. So is it because it was the president's birthday? Is it because that's the day the army was formed? Nobody knows. Or is it that was the day that World War I ended? Was it the president's birthday? The president who decided it was Veterans Day, was it his birthday and he just came up with it? Or was it the day that the army was formed? Or maybe nobody knows. Or is it the day that World War I ended? What do you think? 
We got some a C, some D's. Dell Memorial Day is those is for those who died, but it's for those who died serving in the military. And so to clarify, when you if you're a veteran, you pass away, you, you, you're still considered a veteran. That would be the difference yes. from Memorial yes. Day. Yes. OK, so Veterans Day is always on November 11th because that's the day that World War I ended. And there's a lot of history behind this. And we'll go over a little bit of it. I, we can't cover it all. But it is very interesting. So. The first Veterans Day was actually called Armistice Day, and that's because that's when um, World War I ended, basically. And that was on November 11th at 11 a.m. So it was 11 a.m., the 11th month, on the 11th day. And so we call that Armistice Day. And that was the end of the first war, the first Great War is what we called it then. Then several years later, that's when we made it an official holiday. Then we decided to make it into, after several years had passed and we had another war, we decided to call it Veterans Day because it was going to represent anybody who had served in the military. And now we had two wars, so we didn't want to just make it about the first war. So that's when we called it Veterans Day, but we kept it on the same day. Now, there was a period of time where the um, government switched the day so that it was always on a Monday, which meant it wasn't always on November 11th. And a lot of people didn't like that because it was like there was so much history to why it was chosen on that day. So it went back to November, November 11th. So it's always on November 11th, no matter what. And it's because it was based on the end of World War I. And that leads into a little bit of our next question. I don't know if you've ever seen poppies. Poppies is that red orange flower that you see in that picture. They're associated with Veterans Day. And you might see them in some of the stuff, um, like again, on TV or in the newspaper, an article you might be reading somewhere on the internet, you might see poppy come up when it comes to Veterans Day. And I didn't understand for a long time what that was about either. So why? Why are poppies associated with Veterans Day? A. Poppies were mentioned in a famous poem. Most veterans love poppies. Poppies are red like our flag or nobody knows. What do you think? Who has a thought? Why are poppies associated with Veterans Day? I honestly didn't know they were. I thought they were just for Memorial Day. Uh -uh. Uh, I missed that. I don't know. I didn't, I like, I, said, I didn't really know much about it until I started studying it a couple of years ago. All right, we've got A's, A, C, D, B. So is it Kiki? So Kiki has, she's giving us a clue. She says it's, did you say it was A? Kiki okay. answered it. Um, but it's, and she said because it's related to the fact that the answer is poppies were mentioned in a famous poem. But the poem was written by somebody, I think it was actually Canadian, I believe. Um, and it was yeah. written during World War I, related to all of the deaths that were occurring in World War I, and that there was a lot of poppies growing. And so he wrote a poem and it's called In Flanders Fields. And I believe he's Canadian. Um, so it was based on something that occurred in World War I and it's carried over. And the reason it's still associated with our Veterans Day is because our Veterans Day, though it incorporates all veterans, is still founded on the World War I you know, history. And a lot of other countries, like other people have said in the chat, have their own version of Veterans Day. They don't call it that. Some call it Remembrance Day. Somebody else calls it oh, Armistice Day. Armistice. I think yeah, still, still does call it that. Um, but they're all in a lot of so a lot of different countries that were our allies in World War One have a holiday bound around the same day. 
they might have it some called something different, but the poppies have carried through and it's a it's a symbol that I don't know every country that celebrates something of this sort uses it, but it's something that certainly pops up a lot. Oh, no pun intended, pop poppy. Um, but it's actually really, it's not a very long poem. It's very interesting. So if you, um, with permission with your parents, look it up on the internet because it's a nice, um, it's an interesting look at the at a little bit of history and a little bit of poetry at the same time. So yeah, very interesting. All right, that is all we have for Veterans Day. And that is a lot of history, but I find that really interesting. So we are going to switch over to daylight savings time. And Katie's not allowed to answer these because she has a fact back on daylight savings time. So she probably knows them all. But thank you for doing all that work on the veterans. All right, so this past Sunday, Daylight Savings Time ended. So that is this week's current event. So let's see what you know about it. So it ends in November, because it just ended. What month do you think Daylight Savings Time begins in? Do you think it's February, March, April, or May? All right, we got April, we got March, another March. Ashley, your kids seem to be agreeing with each other more today. <laughs> we got February, we got a couple Februaries, I think. Do we have any more guesses before? We got an April. <laughs> no maze yet. Oh, okay. So Kiki is in UK. So yes, you're going to have different answers to some of this. All right. You're going to learn a little American current events here. So Al thinks it's two months all right are you ready it is march it is the second sunday in march so that's when it started this year and that's when it will start next year so we are four months away right i did that math correct four months away from resuming daylight savings time all right so there's as there often is with things, there's a few different people who are said to like invented daylight saving time or, you know, thought of the idea first. So only one of these people is credited with thinking of daylight savings time, saving time, sorry. Um, there are a few other people not on this slide that deserve some credit. So who on this slide do you think helped Think up daylight saving time. Do you think it was Ben Franklin, George Washington, Albert Einstein, or Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was a president during the Great Depression? Who do you think thought up daylight saving time? All right, looks like we have a C. Ashley says her kids do this Monday, so we're going to see if they remember what they learned. <laughs> Ashley's, oh, I don't know that this was in Katie's fact pack. This was in my unit study. Is this in your fact pack, Katie? Yeah, I believe so. It's in both? Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's says D. Ashley. And Ash's eight-year-old says D. We got an A or a C. She's playing, Kiki's playing the odds. <laughs> we got another A. All right. We got a B. We're all over the place. All right. 
It was Ben Franklin, and he gets credit for thinking of lots of stuff. He was doing all sorts of stuff back then. Um, George Hudson is somebody who also gets credit for like, that was more in the 1900s, like actually inventing it and having it go into effect. He was in New Zealand. Um, that is not an American who invented it. All right, let's go on to number three. There are two states in the United States that do not observe daylight saving time. So who do you think they are? Do you think it's California and Montana? Maine and Delaware? Hawaii and Arizona? Or Alaska and Washington? Who does not observe daylight saving time? While you guys are answering, I need to apologize, Ashley. I did not have that in my fact pack. And oh, okay. I knew I mentioned FDR. And that, so I was thought he was the one that you were looking for, but he mm -hmm. reinstated it during the war. So that's what was in my head. I did not have uh, that information in my fact pack. Okay. So the, yeah, that's why Ashley's family yeah. didn't know it. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So Indiana has daylight saving time since they're not one of our answers. So correct. Okay. So let's see. Kiki thinks it's C. We got another C. Ash says five year old says A. JC says A. We got we got a B C B C B C. We're trying to cover our bases here. And a B. All right. It is. Al agrees with Kiki. It is C. It is Hawaii in Arizona. Do not do daylight saving time. Now there is a reservation, the Navajo reservation that's in Arizona. They do daylight saving time on the reservation, but the state of Arizona does not do it. All right, let's see what's next. So in nine, so there's lots of people that talk about how they don't like daylight saving time. We should get rid of it. You might've heard that over the past week. So we actually tried this in 1974 and it was just a trial. It was like for 14 months or something like that. And so how did it go when we tried it in 1974? Do you think A, people loved it, but Congress just refused to make it permanent? Do you think we kept extending the trial, but we just never made it permanent? Do you think we did make the law permanent that we got daylight saving time year round, but just nobody's enforcing the law? Or do you think they ended the trial early? What do you think? All right, Ashley remembers coloring that. Maybe she, uh, probably Arizona and Hawaii is what you remember coloring. I gotcha. All right, so we've got B, it was extended many times, but never made permanent. We've got, somebody thinks people loved it, but Congress did not make it permanent. Else covering our bases by picking two. All right, we are all over the place. We got a, a vote for every letter. Do you know about this, Katie? What I happened? Don't. Do you want to take a guess? D. You think it was B? Okay. D. D. Oh, D. You're saying D. I turned you down so you weren't echoing, so now I can't hear you. <laughs> you have to answer in the chat. All right. It was D. So it started in January, the trial, and people are happy with it. But then remember what it was like a week ago before the clocks changed. Remember how dark it was in the morning? Maybe maybe you sleep in and you don't even know, but it was really dark in the morning if you had to like drive to work or school. And so people didn't like it. And so by the end of October, they were like, forget this, we don't like it. And they stopped the trial before they had even finished the 14 months or whatever it was. So I'm curious, like this was in 1974, no mm -hmm. internet, no cell phones. How did they communicate that to everybody? Just like TV announcements and newspapers? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> the radio? Did you, 
What if you didn't get the memo and you went to catch an airplane or go to school? Oh, I, well, okay. So you bring up an interesting point. Was it like overnight? Were they like tomorrow yeah. this is done? I didn't think about that. It well, now like we need to chaotic. research that. You're so practical, Katie. You're like, but how? <laughs> how, how did they, I mean, could you imagine if we did that today and we have instant information we can throw out to people, mm -hmm. but I would still be like, not everyone's going to get the right. message. Okay. Well, we'll have to look into that. All right. One more question. Maybe we'll bring you that information next week. So last year, the U.S. Senate passed a bill to make daylight saving time permanent. Okay, same thing we did in 1974. What do you think the bill was called? You think it was Take Back the Clock Act? Daylight Saving Time Forever Act? Sunshine Protection Act? Or Sunny Days Act? What do you think the Senate named their bill? Can we do chicken trivia next week? We already have our plan for next week. While you all are answering, I'll look. Next week is marshmallows, gingerbread, and we don't have our current events. Maybe if there's a current event about chickens, I don't know. Well, we will think of that for the future for sure. All right. We got a couple C's. The Sunshine Protection Act. Anybody else want to jump in? We got a Sunny Days Act. Is that what the orange juice is called? Is that Sunny Days? Sunny, oh, Sunny D's. That's what that is. All right. We've got a lot of C's. Do you know this one, Katie? I don't. I, okay. I'm going to guess well, then take C a guess. as a protection. You're thinking C as well? Mm -hmm. All right. It is the Sunshine Protection Act. So let's ask a government question. The Senate passed it. So why isn't it law? What else needs to happen if the Senate passes a bill? Does anybody know? Let's see if anybody comments. Can the Senate make laws all by themselves? All right, while you're all thinking about that, I will come back and answer it. I'm just going to do a little plug for next week. <laughs> next week, I mentioned we're going to be doing marshmallows. This is our free unit study, and I will put this in the comments on the YouTube video. Actually, I could put it right here, too, if people would like it and grab it from here. And you don't ever have to do the unit studies to be able to participate. You might, you might do better at the trivia, but... Still fun anyways. All right. And then Katie is going to be doing gingerbread facts next week. If you're feeling really, um, what's the word I want? If you want to make gingerbread to have as a snack while you do homeschool trivia with us next week, that would be awesome. It'd be a lot easier just to eat marshmallows though. Or, right, or you could eat marshmallows. You have lots of options. Next week is pretty, pretty sweet. <laughs> yes, or you could make a gingerbread house early with marshmallow decorations. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, we have an answer. L says has to pass through the Senate. If they say no, it goes to... Well, oh, I think you're abbreviating. To the House... To the House of representatives. Is that what you're thinking? So it did pass the Senate. Are you saying it goes to the House of Representatives now, Al? Because that is true. So once the bill passes one side of Congress, it has to get past the other side. And the House of Representatives has have not voted on it. They just haven't voted on it. Um, what would happen if they said yes? Would it be a law then? No. Nope because the president would still have to sign it. So lots of people have to get involved for a law to happen. 
All right. Do you have any closing words, Katie? I don't. That was all very interesting. All right. I hope everybody learned something today. And we will see you next week for marshmallows and gingerbread. You should probably have food with you so we don't make you too hungry and you have no food. We'll Bring see you, you next week. Fruit.